What's going on everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video here on my YouTube channel and for those of you that are new around here and don't know who I am, my name's Aaron and I create travel photography and videography based content here on YouTube so if that is something that will interest you be sure to subscribe to the channel and before I get into this video I do want to say happy new year to everyone who is watching this around new year's day. I hope 2018 is amazing and I hope you had a boss 2018 as well let's just jump straight to the video. So as you'll be able to tell by the title of the day, I'm going to be giving you my hostel hacks from all the experiences I've had traveling around Europe and Southeast Asia, staying in hostels, backpacking, and I'm just going to share with you all of my hostel tips and advice in this hostel guide for anyone who hasn't visited hostels before, maybe it's your first time in a hostel, or anyone just looking to gain some extra experience in staying in hostels if you are backpacking at any time during 2019. I'm going to be giving you some of my best tips to make sure you have the best experience possible while staying in hostels and making your travel experience that much better. So if you do find any of these tips useful at any point, be sure to let me know by leaving a like, put any comments or questions down below in the comment section, and check out the rest of my travel tips series that will be linked on screen right now let's just jump straight into the first tip. Okay, so I'm actually going to start off with some key essentials that you probably hear a lot of people take, but I'm just going to mention them once again and then give you my reasons for them. So the key essentials that you have to take regardless of where you go, if you are staying in hostels, I recommend earplugs, an eye mask, a sleeping mask, padlocks and flip-flops. Now, earplugs and sleeping mask very very self-explanatory you want a good night's sleep in a hostel and they can be a bit loud and there can obviously be a lot of distractions going on during the night so them two essentials just you need to take them padlocks now the best option for padlocks i actually have quite a few of these ones these are by travel more not sponsored by them not like that i just really like them and you basically want a padlock with a type of lock like this which you know you can actually make flexible now the great thing with them padlocks is they are not set they are flexible meaning that they will fit all different types of locks so each hostel you go into you'll probably find has a different type of hole or locking system whatever it may be that you actually have to get your padlock through so having a flexible one just makes life so much easier rather than having to jam your padlock in because it's too big or too small or whatever the situation might be just get a padlock like that because it will suit every type of locker you come across now flip-flops is another kind of self-explanatory one but not everyone does opt for it and it is just for when you are showering some of the hostel showers aren't the nicest of conditions some of them are perfectly fine but wearing flip-flops just kind of makes it a bit better flip-flop slides sandals whatever you want to call it you know what i mean wear them for the showers wear them when you're in the bathroom just for that extra bit of hygiene when you're traveling and using hostels now a couple of extra essentials that not everyone takes but i do personally go for is a sleeping bag liner i've yet to actually use it but i came very very close in one of the hostels that i stayed in croatia and the reason for it is either if it's cold which i've never really had when i was traveling or if the conditions in the hostel room itself aren't the nicest and you want that extra layer of protection between yourself and the bed if it's not the cleanest environment to be in. So there are two options that you may actually come across where you may actually need a sleeping bag liner. And then another one is your own pillowcase. Again, that's kind of self-explanatory. If the conditions, the environment, the cleanliness isn't the best, you may want to take your own pillowcase. But again, that's just kind of an added extra. You don't essentially need it, but it's just one of them that you might want to take just in case. And then a big tip, which I very, very rarely see anyone ever mention, and it's more to do with the privacy side of things. Take your own bed sheet that's very dark. So like a dark blue, a black, anything like that. And the reason for this is I'm not going to ask you to start making your bed when you arrive at a hostel. It's a great option to add some privacy if you're on the bottom bunk and it doesn't actually have a curtain. Because whilst hostels are a great social environment, when you want to sleep, at the end of the day, you want to sleep. So hanging a bed sheet from the top bunk down over your side of the bed, if you're on the bottom bunk, just adds that greater bit of privacy. And it also means that you can turn your light on because a lot of hostels do actually have personal lights with it in the bed. You can turn that on without really disturbing people because the dark bed sheet will actually block out the light. So it's just a great option to take. And I highly recommend taking a dark bed sheet with you. Now, a couple of other tips is to prepare all of your clothes and whatever else you need for the next day, the night before, especially if you're going early. So in Croatia, I was going to Kirka National Park, which made me get up around half six, seven o'clock in the morning. I was in a dorm with other people 
and I knew that I obviously had to get up early and get ready. I didn't want to just get up and leave, I still wanted to shower, but I made sure that all of my clothes, my toiletries, everything I needed for the day was charged, and I could literally just get my bag, go to the showers, shower, get changed there, bring whatever I needed to back, put it in the locker and then go, rather than having to disturb people trying to find the clothes, trying to find the right shoes, trying to find chargers and all that type of stuff. Just sort it all the night before. People are not going to complain at you if you are sorting your things at eight o'clock at night. But if you're doing it at seven or eight o'clock in the morning, the likelihood is someone in that room will have been on a night out the night before and they will not be best pleased that you are making that much of a noise so early on. Now to follow on for that, if you are actually getting up when it's dark, whether it be nighttime or morning, carry a torch. Now the best option is the torch on your phone. iPhones now you can actually set the brightness level, which makes it even better just carry a torch don't go turning the main lights on that is an absolute last resort i would never do that unless it's daylight outside just do not turn on the main lights in a dorm it's just it goes against all the rules of hostels people will not be happy with you and you will not get a nice welcome when you arrive back later that night always carry a torch and use the personal light in your bed if you do obviously have one in your hostel just to be respectable to everyone else and hopefully if you were actually the person having a lion they would do the exact same for you. Now one of the best items I've ever purchased is a travel towel. Now whilst they do kind of get quite smelly you can deal with that because you can just wash it but they are absolutely incredible. I just thought it was a bit of a myth when I first bought it. You buy a travel towel that's meant to dry really fast. I was like cool it probably dries in half a day or so. It literally dries instant so when you get showered in your hostel you can dry off you can get changed and by the time you've changed your travel towel has actually probably dried off which means you don't actually have to carry around a big towel especially if you're in beach resorts because you can just take that with you because it's already dry by the time you have to leave now whilst the material isn't the nicest to actually dry yourself with like towels back at home it's a great option and it takes up absolutely no room or weight in your backpack so do make sure you take a travel towel and don't always rely on hostels to have fresh towels because a lot of them don't provide them so taking your own is a must now sticking with the theme of shower time take a large toiletry bag and i know that seems like it's just going to be added weight but just take the same amount of stuff that you take for a smaller toiletry bag but put it in a larger bag and the reason for that is it gives you a lot of space then to actually put your change of clothes in so when you go for your shower you don't just need to go and shower do whatever you need to do with your toiletries then go back to the room and get changed you can actually take your clothes with you do it all at once and then you're not disturbing anyone in the room and obviously you've got a large part of your bag to put the clothes that you were wearing in once you've actually got changed so taking a larger toiletry bag does actually obviously allow for you to just be a bit more efficient in your showering time because in the next point i'm going to mention that you do need to minimize the amount of time you are showering when you are staying in hostels and following on from that as i just said the next tip is to minimize the shower time that you use when you're in hostels and by that i don't mean just jump in the shower and jump out because that is unhygienic just do everything you need to do as efficiently as possible it may be okay to sing and dance in the shower for 20 to 30 minutes when you're at home but trust me it will not be the best decision you make to do that when you're staying in a hostel because at the end of the day everyone is traveling when you're in hostels and people have places to go and things to do so if you're holding everyone up by taking a 30 minute long shower just because you want to just think about life or sing or dance or whatever you do in the shower it's not going to go down well and you will have some very unhappy roommates so just minimize the time you spend do everything you need to do but just do it efficiently and don't waste any time for other people now when it comes to booking hostels i've always recommended to book your first night in advance that way you don't have to worry about where you're going to stay when you arrive in a new place but also you get better rates when you pay for the rest of your nights in person so just always book that first night online hostel world whatever website you use and then when you're actually there if you're staying in a place for four nights just book the rest of them when you actually get to the place itself because they will give you better rates in person because obviously they're dealing with cash and the cash just goes straight to them rather than through a booking website so do always just book the first night don't go for four because you will end up paying over the odds now this is a big tip that again i don't see many people using and that is to store your valuables like phone passport any type of documents or even money in either your day pack which is like the small backpack or under your pillow at night because then you know for sure no one is going to steal them even if you just put them in your day pack and you put them in the locker hostels are safe don't get me wrong but people can still break into these things and steal your stuff whereas if stuff is underneath your pillow or you're using your day pack as a pillow or as a second pillow 
They've literally got to wake you up to steal your things. And if someone wakes you up to steal your things, you are not stupid enough to just hand it over to them because there's a lot of other people in the room that will help you out in that situation and that would just not happen anyway. So do make sure that you put valuables, phone, money, stuff like that, right close to you, literally under your head when you're sleeping at night, just to make sure they're extra safe. Now, this is one that a lot of people often overlook and it is to know your limitations when it comes to alcohol. Obviously, when you're back at home, get drunk, it's fine. It's just one of them things. You've got people you know and trust around you. You know how to get home. You have family that will get you home if you need to. And obviously, you know the area that you're in. But when you're traveling, especially if you're traveling alone, whilst you may feel like you know the people you're out with, maybe you feel like you know your roommates, you don't know them completely. And at the end of the day, they were strangers literally two or three days ago. So just make sure you don't get yourself into any embarrassing or potentially dangerous situations and just know your limitations with alcohol. Have a good time, but just don't go too far away. You can't control what's going to happen next, especially when you're traveling in a country that you've never been to before. Now, another big tip that I do try to mention in quite a few videos is always arrive at your hostel during daylight hours. That just makes the whole process seem much easier, especially if it's the first time you've ever stayed in a hostel. I actually arrived in my first ever hostel in Bangkok at like 10 o'clock at night. It was pitch black. The door was locked it was fine i got in and all that completely fine but when you don't know the setup the surroundings the area it's just nicer to arrive in daylight because you do feel a bit more comfortable even if it's the exact same scenario it's the exact same location it's the exact same people everything's going to be the exact same whether you arrive at 10 a.m or 10 p.m but you do just feel a bit more secure arriving at 10 a.m when it's broad daylight outside and you'll find there are a lot more people about to help you if you do get lost. And then my final tip is to always hide some spare money. I actually took $100 just completely spare and it was hidden in like the most bizarre way that I could think of. So even if people tried to look for it, they probably wouldn't find it. And I only knew where it was within my bag. And then take photocopies of your important documents like passports, driving licenses, stuff like that. Just take photocopies of it just in case you do lose things or anything does get stolen. But again, try and hide them in your bag in a way that not many people think is normal. So don't like just throw them in your bag. Try and think of putting them in a sock or something like that. So you know where it is, but no one else does. So if everything else does get robbed, which is highly unlikely once again, as I said, just in case it all does get robbed, at least you've got some essentials that can obviously get you out of most situations. But that is all for these hostile travel life hacks that I've been giving you in this video. If you did find any of them useful or you have any advice of your own, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and put any comments down below. If you have any extras that you want to add along for other people to know about, as I said, put them in the comments below. And if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel. There is going to be a lot of new content coming in 2019, including some awesome trips that I cannot wait to share with you guys. But thank you for watching. Till next time, goodbye.